This video continues from the first episode by building out a little menu on these buttons up here and also moving, uh, having a shift layer for our selection of sources on the switcher part of Iraq Fusion Live. So we, uh, so far we have built up input select, cut, auto and fade to black, including transition on this fader. And now we'll be focusing on these right here. So we already know that we are probably going to uh, create a, um, or have those enclosed in a layer. So what I, I kind of want to do is to put in a new layer right here for, there can be different reasons to put things into a layer. Oh, let's just, okay, let's just create a few functions up here. Then we can see why we want to do that. Actually, I just want to click on that. Make sure that I'm on the right fusion layer, create, edit. I'll just pick Kia. So uh, downstream Kia. Downstream Kia, what do I want to do with it? Um, I can do cut auto. That would be a uh, cut is like a hot selection of the downstream Kia like that. Okay, so that is in place. We can zoom in and we can see as the system is thinking about this, it seems like we have the downstream Kia here. So the ATEM switcher. Over here, if I, let me see, turn this on now, we should see, ah, it's lighting up. Okay, so I turn it off, I turn it on, I turn it off. Nice. What if we could go the other way? Let's just check if that's the case. So real quick, we'll just um, make the ATEM software control here in the background. We go to simulation mode, we click, yes. So we have, <laughs> that's how easy it would be to associate that parameter we just had with that button. And we can now move on to the next one, basically. So on the next one, we would, um, let's just do that and then make it a function for uh, the DSK auto. Okay, so that's auto. So that makes a nice transition for your downstream key. Thinking, 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 and it will say something else here. Now, there are other videos that shows you how you can customize labels and so on. But we can now see that this is also in place. And if I go here, let's just try simulate. We can see that, yeah, now it's doing auto on taking the transition on and off here. So that's just nice. The other one is following along all the time. So that's super cool. So um, I already imagined that I could build this out as much as I want on the other keys, but I realize now that I might want to have more functions that can fit into these six buttons. So what about making a little menu so that this becomes a pageable area on my controller, like having those six buttons on pages that I can cycle forth and back between. That sounds like a great idea. And this is why you need to know about layers. So we'll create a child layer over here where we can put those. Uh, and that would be like my, my menu for instance. So we'll just create that. And now you see that we have this layer on top and we could move these two uh, up on that layer. I hold down command on my Mac, uh, something else on a PC. I can use cut and, and then I can paste it in up here. And now these two are moved up to this layer. There's one thing that is pretty neat about that. And that is layers can uh, be used for selecting background color or default color for these. So if you go to default feedback after having selected the layer, you could pick a different background color for these two. Let's pick something that is more um, uh, easy to see. And that is now this blue color here. That is the background color of these two. So that basically that default feedback of a layer is, is um, often painting the behaviors on the layer, unless those behaviors have uh, overwritten the same colors or titles or whatever is put right there. Okay, so I still um, am not having my menu. Actually, I wanted to go even further and say across these up here, um, let's just go out of simulation mode. If I select all of these, I would like to create a bunch of pages out of these six buttons. So I'll just, just do that create pages here. And then it says this weird thing, which I believe honestly is a, yeah, it's weird to me because it has to do with the fact that these two are already created. And I, I think that might be a mistake. We'll go, just see, but I can also just do it with four of these. Or I could delete these two. So now I right click create pages. I now can type in how many pages do I want? And I want two pages in this case. I can pick a variable and let's just call it switch a menu. And I could also pick colors. Let's just stay away from that. Copy doesn't make any difference. Submit. Now see what happens over here. If it wasn't for the second bug that we are encountering today, namely that behind this dialog, there's another dialog. So if I click here, I get to that dialog and it tells me there is no variable called like you wanted. So do you want to create it for you? Yes, please. And now see that we have this variable called switcher menu created over here. 
And that is actually the one driving the visibility of these two pages. You have seen that in different videos. This is just a quick way to create pages because you could do this manually as well. And then I noticed that there's a little quirk and that is if you have multiple pages and you delete one of them, then it might also manipulate the variable because there's some kind of flag in the system that indicates that this has been created in this way. So uh, let's just see. Um, Sorry about that explanation. But if I go to the variable and I, I change its value, its value over here, you can see that the visibility of these two layers are, are changing. You can also see there's some kind of reaction here, just real quick so you understand that. But this is dummy content that I put into it. And uh, what I basically want to do here would be to say, okay, page number one, let's call it DSK for downstream keys. Page number two, upstream keys. You could also have one for macros uh, and audio control and so on. This is what we usually do on this kind of thing. Then I want this menu layer to actually be just that, just like a, a, a containing layer for our menu. I don't want it to have any any behaviors on, on it. Actually having those two behaviors down there means that it's only these four that are changing. Did you notice that? You know, as, as we are changing the variable, notice that these are constant over here, but these over here are going to change. So as I'm doing that, you see that the, the path on top and the dummy content is changing. And that confirms to us that it's only these four that are actually moved around. Now notice what happens if I select these two, right click, cut, and I paste them onto the DSK layer, all right? So now they are moved up here. And currently we see the upstream keys layer. So if I go back to my variable and I switch these around, you see that they come into play now that they are on that layer, okay? And as I'm changing down to this one, there is no behavior definition for these two keys anymore in the system. This is why they blank out because now they are on that layer. So yeah, if you have things that you just want to be there all the time, at the bottom of your layer tree, you can put them on the root layer like we have done for auto, cut, fade to black, the fader. None of those, none of those would, would change by, at least as we are planning it right now, by any menu. They are always there in those locations. Um, but for, for this up here, it is kind of neat to have them in that menu. So that is in place. And what is the next thing you want to do? Oh, yeah, um, you, you can probably just yourself figure out that if you want to go here and add upstream Kia functionality, you would just do that, type in upstream. And then I think we'll have like, if it was upstream cut, we'll just pick that. We have ME1, we have also the upstream Kia to think about, and that is now getting onto that button here. So we have upstream Kia control. Let's just check it real quick here with the ATEM. So that would be this guy. So we see if we change it on the ATEM software control, it's turned on. If we click it over here, yes. So that's also nice in place. Super cool. Let's just go out and, and zoom out a little bit because what I want to do over here is to create a little navigation. On this key, I want to have the menu. I think we do that on our default configurations of the live flies. So that makes a lot of sense going for that. This is the variable we want to change. The thing is that the menu is likely to be something that I want to create on uh, down here on the right fusion layer, like a button there. I could also put it up here, but actually I to, to do this, I would probably want to take this variable and move down onto this layer because this variable is only visible from, uh, you know, in the tree and then out, outside. Um, I'm afraid that right now we have a bug in the system. If I cut this and I paste it in here, something else unexpected might happen to this upper layer up here. I'm just telling you because, yeah, you see that layer disappeared. So this gives me a chance to show you undo. Undo goes back one revision of your change to configurations. Isn't that pretty cool? If you click here, you have like a whole list of all the undo things that you can actually uh, go through. Um, so we, we have undo redo in this web application running on a panel. That is that is pretty awesome. So maybe today I could do this by simply editing the. Ha! Huh, I could of course also create a blank layer on top and then it deletes the blank layer. But I, this weird bug is hopefully a way when you get to it. I can edit the raw JSON to move it or. I could also just say, okay, it doesn't matter because I can still just create my menu on this layer by clicking that one, creating a behavior for that button right there. 
and basically picking my variable, the switcher menu, choosing step change. That is a really good option because step change will basically look how many values is valid for the variable or a, a parameter. And then it just gives you those two. So as I'm clicking the lower edge on this button, you can see that it's cycling these two menus here. By the way, if you want to follow along on the panel, you can see the panel is also changing in the displays. Maybe that's clear to you. We have the button right here. So I can also do this on the panel, on the Rack Fusion Live in real life. As I told you, we don't need it because we can do everything from in here. Actually, funny thing, there's a different video where we are. I'm going through how this configuration is a, is a Rackfly Trio in our showroom. And we use this to turn on and off our all our gear and also to route video sources on a video router. And uh, I think th this is a physical panel and it is in the showroom. But I also know that all my developers, they are using this remotely by simply going to the IP address and then I can turn on and off everything in this web panel. So it is really super, super useful that you can do all these cool things from within Reactor. That's really exciting. Now, um, where were we? I think of, uh, around this place, right? Where we have just created the menu. So final thing we want to do in this video is to create a shift layer for these uh, buttons down here. And now the, the question is if we are happy with having the nine keys defined on the, on the background layer. I mean, that's okay. Um, but what I think I want to do is to create a child layer and then I want that child layer's visibility to be depending on a shift variable that I'm going to create and assign to a, to a key. So let's just do this. You can create a new child layer either here or you can just go up here, click this guy and then um, shift the level. That's what we'll call this one. And it, it oh yeah, okay. So it got in on the right place. It just collapsed this one. This is probably nice anyway. So on the shifted lay, uh, level, it's currently visible. So anything I put onto this would actually be, be shown right now, but down here, I'll now create a variable, we'll call it shift, and we'll create two options for the variable. If we pick options here, we'll just add option one, option two, we'll call it off, we'll call it on, type in shift, we can call it normal here. It doesn't really matter in this case because we'll assign it to a key that doesn't have a display, otherwise you would see those two values, just like on the paging variable over here. Oh, by the way, if you if you didn't like that it said page one and two, then we could just go edit it right here, and and then we would. So that's the switcher menu variable, and we will change it to DSK upstream Kia. So you can see how I mean, if I change these values on the key, then you know those are the labels that I see in the display. So that's a really nice thing. All this is coming out of remember, it's coming out of step change. One of these standard master behaviors that are built into the system that gives you functionality for, I mean, step changes like half of any parameter you assign to a button or not. Uh, it's only if you have joysticks and faders and so on, then you will pick something else. Or if you have buttons like we just did, where we use set value, set value is like the second most popular because that is dealing with, okay, button press, I'll just set this value on that parameter. So that's kind of your standard um, button press behavior, step change is another one that is so useful when you have parameters that has a bunch of values you want to go between. But now at least um, for this shift, we we want to uh, assign it to the shift key on the controller. So let's just go out of simulation mode, click this guy, create this behavior, pick the variable, and that variable would be our shift variable, submit, step change is already there. This will work as a, let me see, it will become a sort of toggle. Notice the value over there. So as I'm clicking, you see it's toggling forth and back. The thing is, it's always lighting up. I mean, it's always lit. It doesn't show you anything different whether it is on or off, right? So that's what step change does. It doesn't prioritize any of the states over another one. This is why you might want to type in toggle because toggle is like step change, but it actually has priority to the second value that is there. So you see, as it's on, it is now highlighted. And when it's off, it's not. Okay, so that's what you get with toggle. But most of the times, a shift key is usually a hold down key. And if you choose that one, you basically get for as long as you hold down the mouse, I'm holding my mouse, I'm releasing the mouse, I'm holding the mouse, I'm releasing the mouse. Notice the value over here is changing by my press release, press release action on the shift key. We can let it be at that. That's usually how a shift key works. So that's all nice. But now what we want to do is to associate this up here. It's visibility on that layer should be associated with the variable shift. 
So we'll just do that, setting it to the value. And I know that it's on. So I'll just pick the value on. So we see this layer is now depending, visibility-wise, it's depending on the shift variable. Let's just check it. So we just see that the little blue line is changing on the outside of that one. And now uh, I basically need to uh, to create value, uh, to create alternative behaviors up there. I, um, I figured out that you can actually, oh, select multiple of these. So let's just uh, select like, all of these, including MP, I think that are the behaviors I'm going for. I'll just say copy, and up here, I'll paste into this guy. All right, so it seemed like I have just copied the nine behaviors I had down here. I've just copied them onto my shift level, and I will select them here and click that guy, because that gives me a chance to reorganize the values that we are matching onto them, which I think would be nice in this case, because or at least for some of them, so that we can see that there's a difference in what we're doing. So I'll just type in four, three, two, one. And uh, I could also change color. Maybe that matters something. Just see if it does, just for the fun of it. All right, so um, let me see. I want now to go and check out what happens if we press the shift key. Oh, I need to press and hold, okay. So I'm now pressing and holding and you can see on the screen that the shifted level layer is active. The blue line on this left side indicates that. You also see a change to the colors down here. So yes, something is happening. Let's just go here and manipulate the variable in the hard way. So yeah, you can see you can see that we are really changing this around. Except input number one, which is still hard coded to one apparently. So that's probably if you go to this one, you can see yeah. So that would actually be input number four, and then we would be better off. Hey guys, I think we managed to do this. Success. We have created a little menu for the uh, buttons up here. We have created a shift level as well, associated it with the variable and the shift key. We can navigate our menu on this one. So we are pretty much on the road to having something working that resembles very much what you are likely to do as a system integrator in custom configuring a Rack Fusion Live.